hi guys this is Sanam and in this video I'm going to give you an overview of Hashin 3D view mat coupled with the 3D problem and impact problem uh, this impact drop weight problem has already been discussed in my previous video and this video I'm going I'm I'm making this video after around around 20 21 months and I was really busy during this time and I, I today I got some time and today I'm going to give you a overview um, because in, in, in the previous video I have received many comments regarding the regarding the development of the view mat so uh, I, I'm not going to show you the development of the view mat that is uh, that is not uh, going to show but uh, what I'm uh, what I'm going to show is how to develop a model specifically a composite material if we have a material like a composite laminate a zero zero ninety laminate how how we're going to develop it and how how we're going to use a view mat against it so this kind of a model I've already developed earlier uh, it's a zero ninety uh, laminate and it has been it will going to impact with the impactor so this has already been generated and this I have already communicated to you earlier I will going to quickly show you the steps of um, development along with the view mat and I am going to explain some of the uh, one of the view mat that Abacus uh, has and it used to provide to you uh, a harsh and 3D view mat so let's let's quickly jump to it so this is my part module and <coughs> here I have developed a zero laminate a 90 degree laminate and an impactor these three I have developed in the part module uh, let's come to the property module in the property module I have assigned the zero degree laminate earlier I have assigned the composite layer so when you you're going to use a view mat you can't uh, use a view mat with with the composite continuum shell because um, in a uh, in a 3d view mat you need a solid elements so uh, even there is an option of using a solid element through it there is an option but this option is not supported here because uh, uh, till now this option is only available with the um, with the static analysis not with the dynamic analysis so we can't use this so let's delete this we don't need it and uh, what we need is uh, generate a section homogeneous solid homogeneous continue uh, and composite so first uh, I'll what I'll do I'll develop a material property this is the earlier material property that we have I don't need this let's delete it and let's develop a material property so when using a view mat you need to develop a material property so this is my material one let's generate it first for an explicit analysis I need to give the mass density um, in case of a composite the mass density this mass density is a combined mass density of uh, uh, a fiber and a matrix I am using e-glass fiber and epoxy typical LY556 epoxy so for that I have a 1680 mass density you can have yours okay then after that uh, this is dependent variable uh, these are the variables that are uh, going to you're going to use uh, during the uh, visualization module uh, these are solution dependent state variables what are these these are uh, the state variables like for example earlier in the hashing criteria when you used to visualize the module you used to use a uh, hashing criteria damage variables like uh, earlier and so uh, these solution dependent variable will give you that actually uh, like for example state 1 will provide you the fiber failure criteria when the fiber failure occurs and will show you the contours over the damaged material so number of fiber failure materials in my case will be 4 plus 1 5 
and six seven i think seven i have so this i will show you in the view net what this mean seven i have i guess so four five six seven i guess seven and number of, uh, uh, variable number controlling element deletion that means when the element will going to delete that that uh, that is also incorporated inside the view unit and there is a state variable that going to represent it so in my case that state variable will be 5 just for now just consider just believe me that these are the 7 variables and these are the 5th variable this means these are not 5 variables this means this is the 5th variable within the 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 this is the 5th variable that we are going to delete the element and these are the five, value, uh, 5 variables so just be with me I am going to explain what these 7 variables will be and what this 5th variable will be after defining the variables let us go to the user material in the user material we used to put the constants I mean the elastic constants the Poisson's ratio the shear modulus in 3 directions then the Hartian strength in the 4 directions I mean in, in the one direction um, the tensile one the compressive and the other two in the transverse direction tensile and compressive and the shear strength so also so in my case my even or the modulus in the fiber direction that I am going to put 30 and in the second case my is this is all in GPA. Since my material, since my material is transverse isotropic, so my E1, E2, E3 all will be E2 and E3 will be same. This will be my Poisson's ratio mu12. This is 0.29, and my other Poisson's ratio is 0.39. So this will be new. This will be new one two, and this will be point two nine again. New one three, and new two three is point three nine. Next, my variable is uh, my shear modulus G one two. That is um, three E nine. The other shear modulus will also be 3 in a and the other shear modulus G23 will be 1.5 in a. You know uh, for your material these uh, these materials will be different so you put these materials accordingly. Now I will put the strength in the fiber longitudinal direction XT. So in my case it is 700. Next, in compressive direction that is around 250. In the next, uh, this is the matrix tensile uh, in uh, matrix tensile strength. This is around this 39 MPa. Matrix compressive. This is around 70. 100 MP sorry 100 MP and so all these are complete after this uh, I have uh, S12 the shear strength in 1 to plane so this will be ok 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 S12 will be in my case is 50 and S23 is uh, S23 is around uh, uh, 0.3 times of 100 so this is around 30 say. so this is how my user material is developed so I'm going to close it and now let's apply the material property so I've deleted it I show you this okay so in the case of 90 also I am going to delete my earlier material and I am going to apply the 
material now. Solid homogeneous, continue. Material one that I have developed. So now I'm going to assign the material. So this is this material is assigned now. Similarly, assign the material to 90 layer also. Now you have assigned the material, but you have assigned the kind of a same material to both of uh, both of these plies. So you, you need to incorporate the orientation that means this ply is 0 degree oriented and the another ply is 90 degree oriented so in the first one this is the material orientation assign it region in which you want to assign your coordinate system and it will pop up the dialog box i have assigned the additional rotation axis in the third direction the material will rotate angle is 0 degree okay so element these are the isoparam isoparametric element in the third direction bottom to top so orientation is assigned let's assign the orientation to the 90 degree you know in your laminate the orientation of the laminate may be different so you can assign uh, different laminates also in your case the degree may be different so this assigned and put it to 90 degree my computer is getting slow actually so okay come on 90 this is slow okay Actually, this uh, there's a display coming. This display is actually what is making this going down. It doesn't matter. This is complete now. And uh, now, so the material assignment is complete now. In all these three cases, the impactor is a rigid impactor, so you doesn't need to apply uh, apply any property to it. So now the assembly. You know how I have defined in the earlier video the assembly of the structure. So this will be the, my, my impactor and this will be impacting the 0 degree layer, 90 degree layer and 0 degree again. This laminate is 0, 90 and 90 0. But uh, I have made only 190 of compared to the 290s that would be there inside it because there is only 190 required. So there is no delamination occurring between the 290s. So uh, cost equivalently a 190 degree layer is sufficient so my assembly module is complete let's go to the other module step this will be a dynamic explicit analysis i have already uh, defined it and uh, uh, this uh, time period is around 8 milliseconds so from the experiments i know uh, the event will be completed within 8 milliseconds so i have put the time here accordingly now this is important field output manager in the field output manager i have csdmg this is the delamination variable that will show you the delamination occurring between the laminates and this is the dmicrt is the earlier in, in the earlier videos we have seen that dmicrt is will going to output for you the harshing damage variables so in my case we are not using the inbuilt program we are will going to use the view mat so dmsit will going to not do anything in in place of dmsi uh, dmic uh, dmicrt what i'm going to put i'll put the sdv state dependent variable that i have defined there seven state dependent variables so i just put not put the seven i just put the sdv so it will output for me the seven state dependent variable that i'm going to use in my that i have used in my in the view mat and that will going to be output so write sdv here rest you can write if you want more of these variables you can write more and in the third one uh, this is the um, this is the acceleration displacement and velocity at the uh, reference point of the projectile so this most of in most of the cases you know you need need the history of acceleration history 
to obtain the force you need the velocity history to check with your own velocity sometimes you need displacement also you can change it according to your um, according to your convenience the others have also uh, defined this and depend uh, this used to depend what in, in, in this case it is not required actually so let me delete it only these two will be required so let's move ahead in fraction in the interaction one, let's define, you know, we have already defined the infraction and I have told you how to define it. Uh, there are three infractions defined. One is between the layers, between the 0 degree and the 90 degree layer, L to L 0 90 and the another one is again between the 0 90 degree layer. The, these, these will go into give the delamination for you and this is the impactor with the impact surface you know uh, in, in, in my earlier videos I have shown you how to do this okay so let's move ahead now many of the comments were there what are these properties and all these I'm going to show you what these properties are L2L 090 so this is the tangential behavior between the two layers uh, rec uh, earlier I have used 0.4 but in one of the recent papers from China in solid structures composite material uh, solid structures general I have seen that they say that if you need to properly uh, remove the effect of friction of coefficient if you want to remove the effect of friction of coefficient coefficient of friction between the two layers you should your coefficient of friction should be greater than 0.5 it should be between 0.6 to 0.9 so I am going to use 0.6 in cohesive uh, uh, behavior I have used only slave initially in contacts slave nodes and I have inputted these KN and KSS and KTT you know how the how I have obtained these uh, in, in my earlier videos I have, sh I have shown you the explanation in the damage uh, this is the normal mode so um, this is around 30 MP a normal mode and this is around 50 MP a shear mode now these properties are usually if you analyze properly these properties are uh, matrix dependent so normal strength uh, sorry normal um, uh, strength of during the opening of the crack uh, this is 30 e9 um, this actually uh, this value is actu uh, actually uh, dependent upon the um, the matrix tensile strength so this value should be around same with around same as matrix tensile strength so matrix will go into going to be in tension while the delamination occurs so that will be my normal mode during the out of plane impact so 39 e6 will be sufficiently accurate since i've used the 39 e6 same in my tensile strength of the matrix this shear uh, is a mode 2 basically and this will uh, originate when s s12 will will be inactive so s12 is my shear strength and this will be around equivalent to that this will be shear in mode 2 so it, I have um, kept both of them same damage energy is, is very very difficult to obtain uh, tentatively uh, I have obtained here energy linear softening is there uh, and I have seen that that linear and exponential softening doesn't have that much effect during the out of plane impact this is the exponent bk power law exponent you know benzic kinani criteria you can search the literature and get in touch with what benzic kinani criteria is there with the benzic kinani criteria you can get you can actually get the um, the delamination profile so with respect to the energies that you have given here the delamination profile can be uh, can be made within these two uh, one and this actually gives the failure envelope 
so this shows you this uh, benzic kinani criteria gives you the displacement occurring the failure displacement between the two modes so with respect to these energies will be there in the uh, benzic kinani criteria if you see the benzic kinani criteria so these all three energies will be embedded in the equation and what it gives is the displacement at failure so whenever the two nodes failure of the two nodes occur uh, these they, they will occur with respect to these um, equation so let's uh, stop it and uh, what happened okay so this is my property fake i have already shown you why i used to use fake and then this is top impact top impact property is normal tangential behavior so i think 0.3 friction will be sufficient in my case composite and the um, and the impactor and then the hard normal behavior that is sufficient so these are my properties i've shown you the properties how they are obtained and uh, you need to also put your solid your uh, impactor under the rigid body constraint so this is only there in the interaction module let's come to the load module in the load module uh, i have constrained the whole out outer layer outer boundary of the composite laminate with the incastrate and i have made this as a rigid body so that it will not move here there and there only u3 i have uh, allowed so that it can go inside the laminate the direction should be kept free now this one is the velocity the predefined velocity that i have put in uh, this is my value of predefined velocity the velocity that you have given to the projectile so this velocity is there in the drop rate experiment this velocity used to come up 1.786 is my velocity this is corresponding to the 5 joule energy and around uh, 2 kg mass i think what i have taken around 2 kg 3 kg mass i think 3.1 kg mass so this is my velocity now come to the mesh this will be different the meshing of the uh, this plate will be different so i have made this meshing and impactor is meshed with solid elements and composite is meshed with should also be meshed with solid element this is in in the in the earlier one this is uh, meshed with the shell elements so let's remove this and put a 3d stress okay so it should it should be 3d elements now earlier we, we were using a continuum shell elements now we are using a 3d solid elements let's come to this 90 degree also in this case also i am using a solid element okay so this is complete now the model is complete to run before running i need to show you the view mat the view mat that is available on the abacus website this is abacus view mat and guys uh, you need to understand this thing very importantly that this view mat that abacus gives comes with a name unifiber okay so this view mat comes with a name unifiber this view mat is also available in some of the websites if you search in the google you will find that this view mat is available so you can copy that from there but i i i must tell you something very important here if you going to use this view mat this view mat does not gives proper results in my case i have checked with this view mat and it did not give me proper results it, it gives excessive element distortion problems and i have tried um, debugging it tried to debug it but it 
didn't help and I don't know why there may be many reasons for it I'm going to show you some of the reasons some of the debugs that I have put so this is the view mat that I'm going to show to you this is a Hashin uh, 3D view mat obtained from the uh, Hashin website so if you have the license versions of the Abacus CAE and I am sure that you, you must be having a license academic license version of the Abacus then you can go to their website and or through the local dealer you can ask for this for you but as I said this will not going to affect that much and this will not give you proper results because this view mat is I don't I don't know this may be looks to me incompatible uh, nevertheless this is a view mat for you I've shown you the view mat and uh, this view mat is written in Fortran language uh, uh, so if you are new to this see my aim here is to tell you how to uh, generate a model compatible with the view mat and if you have your view mat you can only write your view mat so nobody will going to give you your own view mats abacus has given it but it has errors so it's important that you should start learning this process and write your own view mat for that you only require a 10 to 15 days course of fortran uh, language just get a very basic course and uh, uh, you can get it through some textbook also uh, and then you can come to write your view mat. I'll give you some few points of this view mat, my own opinion about this. So initially this is the uh, this is the header that is required in the Abacus view mat uh, and these are the variables, these are read only variables, these are write only variables these are required you can use this these variables inside the program so what this uh, view mat does uh, during the impact whenever impact occurs and the material properties are required it creates a loop view mats full form is vectorized user material so in a vector format it creates a loop and for one element it gives you a calculation then uh, it takes away the stresses, gives the old stresses. This is uh, uh, there must be stress old here. Uh, there must be yeah, this is stress old. So stresses, old stresses will come and then go down. So I'll explain you how this is working. <coughs> so it sh it shows you user defined material properties, these young models and all these things. I'm going to remove it so that there is no need for it ok now um, these are the dimensions of the properties that has already been defined these are the dimensions ok and comes this uh, in this include Vaba param is one of the files that are there in the backup directory it uh, incorporates this Vaba param and let you miss out with many of the integer real number and all these problems that um, that used to occur when you write a few met fortran um, you, when you write when you write a you know, fortran program it is important to define your variables because fortran only knows four commands it knows addition subtraction division and multiplication only four it knows so to define the further variables like n what is n what is l what is m these are the small you know, variable that you want to use inside the program so these variables are defined you can define them here so in abacus they have um, what they have done they have included this file and this file we're going to pass this effect and you will go into doesn't need to define your n m they already know that these variables are um, the integer like l n to l are the integers and all that so if you want you can define it that will surpass this doesn't matter that much so uh, after this these are the parameters 0 1 2 3 this is in uh, these parameters are there 0 is defined like this 1 is defined like this so that the second order accuracy is is uh, taken in account 
you know, when you when you will going to exp um, learn the Fortran, you understand what this means. After this, these are the SDV parameter variables that I have defined in my previous file. Parameter SDV fiber damage one. Here it has been given a name one. So this is used inside the PO mat. This one two seventy. But one for fiber tension two. This will be output during the visualization when the program runs. These SDVs will be output. You can give them any name, but the same name will be given in the in the later part of the UV mat also. So one, two, three, four. These are my four modes. This SDV MP status status MP fifth. This point is important here because this will going to delete your element when the element fails. This will going to delete it. This is dam stresses. So this is put in here as six. I don't need them damping and stresses. I'll comment it. They have already commented the other. Then ISDV strain. I have put it fifth, so this should be sixth. The strain and uh, six. That's all. Okay, so let's open the damping stress also. So that will be seven. So only these seven variables I'm going to use inside my view mat. Now this n SDV required is the total of the seven elements. So I'm going to say that it is the seven elements. Uh, seven not elements, sorry, the seven variables. So these are the SDVs that I have defined: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is the total seven. This seven I have used in the material properties also. If you re remember it, number of solution dependent variables, number of uh, variables controlling the solution dependent, that is seven. And the number which is going to delete the element is five. Okay, so this is explained. These are the parameters that will be going to used inside. Parameters. Uh, now this is one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the x, x, y, y, z, z, and these are actually the coordinates. So whenever they write in the tensor format, you used to put at one, two, three, four, five, six. You can put. You can comment all of them. You can put one, two, three, four also. I don't know why they have made it so complex. Uh, the third one, the properties. So, the properties are going to be extracted. This I pro one P one we are going to extract my first property, second property, third property, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. I have not used ten. Comment it. This will be my tenth. This will be my eleventh. Twelve, uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Sorry, uh, thirteen. So now this uh, the the material is transverse isotropic. So this will be twelve, and this will be thirteen again, and this will be my fourteen. Since the material is again transversely isotropic, this will be again 14, and this will be 15. So there is no need for 27 properties. Only within 15 you can do it. This is a temporary array, Eigen matrix, Eigen eigenvalue matrix. So they have used it. Now this will going to read the material properties. Even all new. So they will put these variables, parameters here, and the props one will going to put. The it's going to extract the first property, second property, third property, and all these things. The strength will be extracted afterwards. Now they have generated the other new two one, new three one. Now you have seen that this is x is written here. Why x is written? You can they can they could have I mean the coder could have written directly n u, but you know this n is an integer. Uh, so n will produce only one, two, three, four. As I said, n, l, m. These are the integers by default. So that's why it has written x so that it should not con consider this as an integer because the new value should be around 0.23, 0.24. Otherwise, it will take. If you if you write it n, it will take two or three or something like that or one. So new value should not be like that. So that's why it has been written x here. Now in the view mat, 
what is uh, to be done is first generate the constitutive equation your c matrix your c i j k l matrix um, in the composites so they have already done that this is the delta and this is the component c1 c2 c3 and the other components okay so elasticity matrix they said here and this is the strength parameters here so strength parameters 1t will be strength in the tension compression in the one direction 2 tension 2 compression 3 tension 3 compression and the shear strength properties 1 to 3 is what they mean by this uh, beta my beta was already uh, zero so um, this is actually if you want you can you don't need to comment it because the beta should be greater than zero to execute the uh, there is one more subroutine so that the damping could be provided to the structure okay guys one more thing if you want if you want uh, i have not tried it if you want uh, that your um, program should run as i said that this program is not working properly i don't know why but uh, it's very difficult to debug another's another uh, another coders program so i don't know why it's not working uh, i don't know i have written my own subroutine i have written it very different differently from what this is i i have just recently uh, around 2 or 3 years back i am writing subroutine from very long time so but this i have seen very recently um, from one of the websites and then I, i i thought i could have taken a look of this but since i am using my own subroutines and playing with it so there is no need for it um for you guys um, this beta is a damping parameter what it does it gives uh, some stresses to a particular element that are failing so excessive element distortion is mostly avoided by this damping parameter what is the value of this damping parameter i don't know but usually it is less than 1 in one uh, so this is the damping parameter where it has um, it was there somewhere this is i pro beta time so if you want you can change these values so what it does um, you can put your parameter value here okay so you can uncomment it and you can also if you want you can comment it so this is like the case so in this case you need a beta damping parameter if you want you can put some damping parameter here like for example 1 e minus 5 you can check with it if your elements are having some excessive distortion then this is kind of a viscosity value per second value and this gives external additional stresses to the unit uh, in the Um, when the view mat is going to execute in the later part of the view mat, I am going to show what this beta does. It is going to multiply with the stresses and give some additional stresses so that the sudden failure of the structure should not take place. Now, after this, this is assumed purely elastic material at the beginning of the analysis. So they have total time. In my case, I have no, never used it. It is not required. But they said you should use it. Then that's their own uh, subroutine. They are using it. Uh, so <coughs> uh, if you uh, this total time equal to zero, then they, uh, it's going to start it. And then this is n state variable should be less than uh, n state variable required. If 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 this condition is met, then the backers will going to exit. So remember that your this seven should be equal to the number of variables. Put in there. If your variable here is seven, and then there uh, in the material property, this property your user material is something different, then uh, the backers will exit, and this you you view mat will not be of that much importance. So it says like this. After this, it says call orthotropic subroutine, call strain update, call blah 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 blah. then this is the logic how the view mat operates so to under to make you understand correctly what i'll do i'll first after making the constitutive matrix this is how the constitutive matrix has been made only 
where it is this the constitutive matrix has been made once the constitutive matrix is made and the strains are there increments are there so what it will be done the uh, the impactor where, where it is going the impactor the impactor will going to impact the uh, composite laminate so first as the impactor will going to impact it the view map will run and uh, let me tell you they are one of the parts here um, this part so the, whenever the view mat executes the strength of all the elements are checked through the Hashin 3D view mat Hashin 3D criteria so Hashin 3D criteria through the Hashin 3D criteria the elements are checked at each integration point so this is a, again a inside view mat this is called uh, view mat inside the view mat so they have called they're going to call this view mat um, at many look um, at all the points inside the elements so this view mat is called and again these are the variables these variables they need dimensions of the matrices okay and uh, earlier they have taken the strength and then they have divided it for some particular reason then they have going to start this for k equals to 1 to n block this 1 to n block is the from 1 element number 1 to n block means whichever the number of elements total number of elements are there inside the model model which are supporting this view map so not inside this and uh, not the this will not run for this 3d comp um, this um, impact only for the composite laminate so one to n block n block means number of elements total number of elements so status mpk if status mpk this means equal to one that means when the element is not deleted when the value for element is one then the value for status mpk one is uh, value for element status mpk is one that means that particular element has one value that means it is inside the program if its value is zero that means it is deleted that is the logic so if it is one that means it is inside the program it is there then this uh, your stresses this is a, this is the counter that they have put and this is the mistake there i'm going to explain what mistake is there so when whenever the code, coders used to code it and they used to give it to the people or they used to share the program so they do one thing that most of the times they used to um, uh, most of the times what they did they used to put some error inside the program so that only a logical person should be able to understand it not that um, the person has taken the program and just ran it in through his model so person should know the logical concept behind behind it so these are the stresses that they have generated then they have they are going to evaluate the fiber modes so when your sigma 1 1 your sigma 1 1 stress is greater than 0 this is no known that this is the Hashin 3d criteria your rft now again they have used ft instead of rft they have used rfc now it's very important to know why they have used rft rfc rfc this is because I mean they could have used directly fiber tension uh, FT rather than um, rather than um, RFC or rather than these different values this is because when you come to the RMT this matrix MC then this M again is a integer value this is going to uh, remove the uh, decimal after decimal numbers numbers that are there after this and the intelligently they have put in through the rmc so that this effect is avoided so fiber tension is evaluated compressive failure is evaluated <coughs> then matrix tensile mode is evaluated matrix compressive mode is evaluated this looks fine to me okay this looks also fine to me when it comes to this 
I don't know from where they have taken it. This is not Hashim. This is not Hashim criteria. I don't know from where they have taken it and what they have done. They have put in the same value for the matrix and same value for the compressive one also. They have done it same. You are seeing this as somewhat differently because I have tried to put in the exact hashing criteria actually. When you see with the view mat that you will get from the abacus, these values you will see different. I have used my own values and tried to run it through the proper hashing 3D values and these are the proper, proper hashing 3D values here. Okay. So I don't know what they have done in, the, in their program. So if you got this program, you can you can actually modify it. You can write your own values here. Okay. Uh, like in this case, RMT, you can write the proper hashing RM, uh, RMT value or uh, uh, hashing compressive strength value, uh, compressive strength equation. Okay. After these four equations are written, this is I have commented. This is what they have used for RMC and this is what they have used for RMC ok I have commented it and written my own one this is they, they are both same and I, I don't know how they are writing the same for tension and compression I don't know that so when these modes are ok then they are doing the Egan value analysis also and then they are kind of deleting the element here the status mpk equal to 0 that means if a particular Egan value matrix is uh, again this is economic econom max is the eigen values so e max is defined above e minimum is also defined if it is greater than e max or this smaller than e max or fiber your fiber tension criteria is satisfied equal to one then delete the element this is what the meaning of this uh, um, loop is okay once you have deleted the element, this is the counter rate. What is NDMG, NDMG and LDMG? When you see in your subroutine, uh, there is some, in the earlier one, this is NDMG. So this is where they have made a small uh, error so that you will not be able to directly run it. So I have corrected it, LDMG. So initially, the LDMG value is 0 but it is not LDMG, it is L fail and there is no L fail inside the whole program so this will be LDMG sorry so LDMG will be 0 so initially the LDMG will be 0 and then as the failure of the composite matrix occurs then this value is updated ok whenever anyone occurs this LDM, LDMG is updated LDMG is updated so they are kind of playing with the counter actually so that's okay they can do it um, I don't do it but they are doing it okay as a matter and so this is how the NDMG is updating and where is MDMG? MDMG is upper I mean outside the subroutine is there so that whenever the damage occurs whenever the, whenever the NDMG values is greater than 0 then what will happen the damage will occur so the damage initiation criteria is met and once the damage in initiation criteria is met with NDMG equal to greater than 0 so greater than 0 means 1 whenever it, it will occur 1 now uh, this NDMG will be the earlier one the updated one this is actually NDMG is getting updated here this is the earlier MDNG means for the earlier element and this is earlier for the earlier increment not not for the element NDMG is for the earlier increment and this L L L D uh, this LDMG is actually updating it so whenever any failure in the mode occurs NDMG gets updated and the damage starts to occur so whenever a particular damage starts to occur after the damage initiation damage evaluation took place they have written for the damage evolution this is damage evolution dmg fiber tk they have written it as one that means this this is damage evolution put it directly as one there are many equations that used to come along with it 
there is a linear damage evolution there is a exponential damage evolution linear exponential is there and this one is sudden damage evolution sudden damage evolution most of the times is not feasible because reducing the stiffness of the structure to directly to zero is not recommended so i think uh, if you want then you can put your own linear subroutine um, sorry you can put your own equation here so that the damage is actually um, doesn't occur directly to one it should be somewhat the, the evolution should not be directly to one it should be in steps so that the numerical st stability should not uh, should be avoided uh, one way that i have done this is by putting it one upon rft so once the value will be greater than one the rft value will be greater than one then it will be inverse so that if it is 1.1 so it will become 1 upon 1.1 it will become 10 upon 11 so this will be less than one so values will be in subsequent orders i mean 0 0.8 0 0.2 so directly if you are going to put it to one that will going to obviously going to distort the element and that's why i think the elements are distorting in this event so you can do with your own one if you want then this can be updated this can be updated and the other force can be updated so once this is completed let's come to the another subroutine which will going to degrade the matrix now this is the subroutine that is going to degrade the matrix orthotropic 3d elasticity i don't know why i have written elasticity this is going to degrade the matrix why where, where does the word comes elasticity so that all depends upon the coder how they wants to execute they wants to um, use the subroutine so again subroutine variables include vapa para okay parameters dimensions now the <coughs> the program will going to run from n to one to n block from all for all the elements and these are the values extracted from there okay? that was one earlier this value was one so they have extracted there this comes from writing the within the subroutine these are the arguments so from this argument they have taken it from there and then dft dft values are updated here when this value dft will be one then they will going to put it one this will become zero okay and this will uh, let's say this will also be zero or one this will also become zero so dft will be zero so zero minus zero will be one c11 one one will directly go down to zero that is not recommended i don't know i have seen i have done the simulations and i will never going to degrade my stiffness matrix directly to zero this is my stiffness matrix this is how they are degrading it directly to zero i don't know why they are doing it <coughs> secondly uh, whenever the matrix failure mode is satisfied that is put in one then there it will going to degrade the in the 2 2 direction 3 3 direction and um, uh, they, they have done it um, in this way and many of the papers have also incorporated this this format of uh, um, they, they probably have taken it from uh, from this view might only so they have uh, done that and many people you find in the low lost impact in fms people also they have used this logic i don't use it i never used to play with the stiffness <coughs> i used to keep the stiffness as same and you reduce the stresses instead uh, if you see the continuum damage mechanics model that are coming the latest damage models they used to do a degradation of the stress or degradation of the strain and then couple with the uh, c matrix and produce the stress again so that's the stresses are degraded constitutively degrading the stiffness matrix is not advisable uh, but they are doing it so no problem so after degrading the stiffness matrix the stress is updated here okay so this is how the view mat goes down once the stress is updated then the strain is updated with the increment the next increment will come this is the strain view mat so if we going to <coughs> just a second that's
okay sorry for that this will going to update the um, strain for it so your strain new the, your old strain plus strain increment so next increment will come for a particular element so in this way all the elements will going to experience the increments <coughs> Uh, remember that for each increment what the subroutine does it comes up with the increment solve for n block 1 to n for all the elements for that particular increments then save these values and then it goes down and then it comes back again put the old values and comes with the next increment the next increment this all is called as a vectorization and that's why it's called as a view map so the strings is going to update again and again this is actually very complex view map for um, I, I should not have actually used it but i'm i don't know i'm compelled to use it because this is only the commercially available so on view map usually the explanation of the view map is not with with these kinds of these are high uh, high level kind of a view map uh, which i like for example what i write is very small I mean directly a very direct view mat I used to write not with this this much complexity uh, the strains are updated and then all these things I have already explained beta damping if you want the beta damping you can directly write that beta you don't need to go into it okay it only going to update the stresses here stress new it calculates the damping parameters calculate some of the damping stresses and include inside your old stress is going to update it that's what it's doing and internal energy computation uh, this is very obvious how they are going to integrate the internal energy of the system uh, and then uh, this is copy r this is going to copy your sdv variables from 1 to 2 so that's why you're going to see a progressive um, progressive uh, contours uh, fluctuating on your um, surface um, after that they have done the eigenvalue analysis because this is the dynamic analysis and um, with the eigenvalue analysis what 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 is the advantage that you are actually also considering the effect of natural frequency that the material offers so it's a good part that they have included it i have not included this in my um, in my view right? but um, they have included it that's a good part they are also considering the <coughs> for a for a very for a low velocity impact like this this is not required actually but for a high velocity impact there will be a high frequency oscillation so on that case the material may fail the real material or the experimental the material may fail so that's why they are considering for a high velocity impact so this will going to delete the element here this is the ENOM max this will going to calculate the eigenvalue frequency uh, the frequency from the eigenvalue <coughs> so this is the view map that I have explained you this is very complex guys uh, I have just shown you a brief introduction of what this view map was and how they have used it uh, you don't need to go inside it directly I recommend you please make your own view map um, if you directly want to use it just want to use it the parameters that I have shown you just keep in mind these parameters want to uh, if you are having some element distortion you can reduce this value of damping but uh, but don't go below below 0 0.003 or 0 0.002 don't go below that otherwise you're going to affect your uh, affect your simulation but it will going to improve the uh, consistency and the uh, element distortion definitely but um, it's actually adding a um, uh, stresses to the system artificial stresses which is not right actually going to hamper your um, um, simulation actually but to start initially it's good actually that you are using <coughs> at least something you are using so that uh, so if you going to study this more you can actually write your own subject you know, also it's very very simple um, okay you don't I, I i i don't use to uh, okay okay there is one more thing that needs to be explained okay so what they have done are uh, the subroutines the sub subroutines that are there inside it i have explained you that 
the logic here remains the what the what is the logic now they call the orthotopic elasticity subroutine first that means where the degradation happens so initially there is no degradation so it will go and doesn't affect the stiffness matrix directly after this they will going to return and then call the strain update they will going to update the strain and take the next next increment in the strain update if you go inside you um, inside of this sub subroutine you see that there is an increment coming so in the next increment you they are going to use the orthotropic 3d elasticity where the hashing criteria is available they will going to uh, use uh, going to verify the uh, material materials integration point at materials integration point they are going to verify the check the hashing criteria that the strength is actually over the allowable strength or not if it is then the damage occurs and and dmg initially is set to be zero there that is there as i said this is the counter that will going to number of counters is there so initially at till this point they have said that ndmg is zero now after this point once the end ndmg is greater than zero like for example here if ndmg is greater than zero then again call this if ndmg is not greater than zero then it will pass through it and it will only calculate the beta damping energy for you and it will work. but if the ndmg is greater than zero then it will again check out the hashing criteria actually for you and uh, um, if there is any damage occurring then it will give the damage back to the original one and it will degrade your stiffness matrix so the logic is a bit complex here i don't know if i'm able to explain to you or not directly just by listening to it explaining to it is a very different thing and it's actually a complex new mat i must say this um, uh, you should you should search on the internet try writing your own sub uh, subroutine that's my recommendation for you so once this is all set so what i'll do i'll generate uh, uh, this and i'll going to uh, Um, generate an input file for this okay where it is the temp okay generate an input file so input file is generated here and put your view mat there only so input file i am where i am my temp this is the value my input file and uh, this subroutine for you okay so this is the subroutine this is the input file so generate a command here so you can directly use abacus if you have i i i suppose you have the um, <coughs> subroutine uh, link with the software so you can use the job name any name job and the input file but i am not in the same directory okay i am in the same directory your input file is uh, Actually, which one is your input file? Your input file is this one, zero. Okay. Then, uh, abacus job input file. Then your user subroutine. User subroutine is unifiable. And if you want to parallelize your system, then you can give any number of processors: four, five, six, any any number. Four, or six, or anything. Then you can enter, and it will go into run your simulation. so this is guys all this will going to give you a, have given you a brief overview this video is really long but uh, i have i think i have explained some of the reasons please subscribe this channel so that you can get my latest videos i was really busy 
so I was not able to upload, uh, update, uh, upload these videos um, for you. I have just now made it. If you have any comments about the ViewMat and you want to, to know anything, I can give my comments. But I, I, as I said to you, I have not written it. I don't know much log logic inside it. But that's for sure. When I, when I have used it, I have found some element distortion again, even with some of the exponential damage laws that I have used with it. I found that the results are not proper, and the logic is really, really complex. So that's it, guys. Uh, thank you for listening and thank you for watching this video thank you